Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about <clears throat> scaling code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, how can I manage software code when it gets bigger? It's not about writing clean code, but it's, e but it's easy for me to start writing new software. But when it gets bigger, I feel I lose control of it and I can't manage it. I eventually abandon it sometimes. Mm. So, this is usually solved best, in my opinion, through modularization some and you know a module can exist in many formats it's a, a popular trend is to use some they use the, the term microservices uh, but it's not just it's not the only way to do modularization i just want you to kind of understand a perspective first before we kind of dive into like the different types of module systems that you can use and i'm not talking about like importing module systems or like the thing that you're using in your files I'm talking about a bigger concept than that. So, something that you have to understand as a software developer, and that is counter to human nature, because humans have this tendency where, in order for us to feel safe in something, we f we want to know everything. Inherently, we want to know everything there is to know about something, because anything that is unknown to us feels scary. And the problem is that there are concepts that are so big that you cannot physically hold all of it in your head because you you don't you might not reflect all that much about that guys but your as far as we know nobody's really mapped out how much information a human brain can store but what we do know is that you cannot remember everything that you've ever experienced in your entire life we also know that you cannot possibly comprehend everything that exists within the universe which means that your mind cannot hold all that information or it's very likely unlikely that it can hold all that information the same thing is true for any concept that if it's sophisticated enough it's a, if it's large enough you will not be able to map the whole thing in your head and for a lot of software developers, that, like, that's, that's sort of how they approach their their own process, right? They, I see especially new developers who are like, they freak out when they don't understand the whole code base. And I tell them, you're not going to. It's not possible. I mean, shit, guys, you, Google's source code or like these big companies, they have like hundreds of millions, if not billions of lines of code. Do you think that there's someone there, there who just knows all of it? Of course not. But the thing that you can do is the thing that I want. Pe I'd like to tell people that this is the solution to practically all the scaling problems, and that is to understand that when you are designing something, a piece of this gigantic super system, it doesn't matter if it's like a society or if it's a uh, a piece of code. You have to understand that it's going to fit into an ecosystem and the best thing for something when it comes to fitting into an ecosystem is that it has a standard type of interface like a standard layout it's basically just a brick or a box or something like that that fits into all the other boxes that's an, in case you didn't think about that that's what containers are all about that's why we have containers because people realize that if you just put all the complexities of running an application into a box interface that works the same across all environments that's actually very effective it's the same the postal office does that's why we have boxes because boxes is a better unit to deal with than the thing that is inside the box and if you design your system in a modularized fashion what you're basically doing is well some people would call it domain driven design but that's a different sort of like it's sort of, it's not exactly the thing i'm trying to tell you what i'm trying to tell you is that you have to understand that you don't need to concern yourself with the entire system when you're designing a feature what you have to do, have to think about when you're designing a feature as part of your system is how do i encapsulate this functionality in a way where it is sustainable over time 
it's not going to like, uh, cause any legacy or issues within the entire system. And then finally also the thing that I would like to think about is how do I design it in such a way that we can build on top of it so that when the scope of whatever I'm building increases this system can actually accommodate that change as a single unit. How can you scale that one module? That is what you're looking for. And the way that I believe that you achieve this is very simple. You simply have to think about your feature development in terms of, as I said, a module rather than, I, I see a lot of especially junior developers uh, get this wrong all the time. Uh, they learn MVC and to them MVC means that there's a folder called modules or models, one for views and one for controllers. That is the opposite of what I'm talking about. Because what you're doing in that scenario is that you are creating a, a folder structure that maps a, like, a, like the MVC, what you think is MVC and then you spread the files that contain some feature for say users or login or whatever across multiple places across the project. The reason why that isn't that that does not work is because that is the opposite of modularization. Now you're actually just putting things in a semantic fashion within your code base, and that becomes very hard for you to keep track of. Because as you can imagine, as you get more and more folders and more and more concepts, you get more controllers, the likelihood of duplication goes up, etc. etc. And it's in a sense it's similar to going to the store. The reason why stores like Amazon and so forth are doing so well is because you don't have to keep track of, you don't have to hunt it down where the stuff that you want to buy is. You know that the only thing you have to know is that if you go to Amazon they have it. And the same thing should be done in your code base. You should be able to tell that there is a folder, a module, that has everything related to, say, users, or orders, or products, or something like that and everything that you need to have in order to deal with that concept within your code is within that box and then inside of that box it might be you might have sub boxes more boxes that have a more granular definition of what is a user so maybe you have a module for just a base user or for an admin or for vip users excel you know etc etc right but what you're doing is that you're packaging things within your code in a in a modular way. It basically becomes just a folder that holds the concept that you're looking for. I, in React and front end land I do the exact same thing. I explain to people the same thing. If you're creating visual components, create a package for that visual component and treat that package as its own application. Uh, the like If you're working with say monoreapers or something like that, this becomes very organic where you basically just declare different packages that are their own isolated like application. It's almost like an like a third-party library or you treat it the same way because by doing so you create a situation where you don't have to worry worry about how big the code base gets. There can be a hundred, I mean a hundred million folders or modules because you know that they all work the same or either they follow the same interfaces and that's like I like to call it the McDonald's principle. You should try to design your code base and your internal structures within your, um, in a large ecosystem of either microservices or code or whatever you're doing when you're dealing with large systems in a fashion where regardless of which product you go to, regardless of which code base or module you open or folder or whatever, you can make certain assumptions because there's a standard for doing the things that are common to all of this stuff. And it's the exactly the same thing with McDonald's. Wherever you go in to a McDonald's, the idea is that you get the exact same experience regardless of where you are. That consistency is the key, is one of the keys to the to their success and it is the same benefit that you can bring with you if you design your uh, code base in a modular modular fashion. Because you, even though you can't know how the entire system works and not you can't take in the whole thing, that doesn't matter when you know that you can only focus on the thing that matters to you. Because everything it's going to be, if you just follow the standard practices or the like the standardization process that I'm talking about, you know it's going to fit in to the entire the rest of the ecosystem. So instead of having like an exponential 
complexity which usually happens when you do this other thing that people do as I was saying like you spread your like the, the knowledge of a concept across the entire system uh, you get a linear uh, like a linear in, uh, increment in complexity because you can increase you can just add code to one module that doesn't matter because you are not you're, you're not forced to change code across the entire project as soon as you do something because you can just focus on that thing and incidentally if you didn't think about that this is how package managers work guys this is how npn works maven repositories or like nuget or whatever that is exactly what a package right is it is just a gigantic super system or like a repository of tons and like millions and millions and millions of um, modules that you can pull in whenever you want and they all follow sort of the same interface because that's how you import them into your system and if you follow the same principle it does not matter how much code you have it's always going to be sustainable so what I want you to take away from this is that uh, if you've ever had this issue where you feel like you if the system gets too big and so forth it's usually down to the fact that you're trying to approach software in a completely impossible way which is you try to learn the whole system or you, you want to understand the whole system it's not gonna happen guys you can forget about it what you have to do is to understand that the best way for you to build a, like, a really large system is to focus on making each piece scalable that is what Docker is about, that is what microservices is about, that's what package managers are doing and so forth. You have to understand that that gigantic repository or like system that you're working on, it's going to grow so big that no one person can keep track of it. But that doesn't matter. Just as, you know, in society, you don't have to know how every every person is, you know, living or like build, uh, building a business and so forth because we have laws and regulations and rules that guarantee that there are some standards that you should follow and as long as you can uh, you know that those standards if followed will produce a good end result like a good module in this case that fits into the ecosystem then it doesn't matter how many modules you have because as soon as you need to touch that part of the code, you can go there just as to go as going to McDonald's or like a fast food restaurant. You know what you're gonna get, and then you, you then it doesn't really matter how they built it because you, it's consistent and fits into the ecosystem, and that doesn't produce any legacy. That's a system that can grow indefinitely. Have a great day.